Hello, and welcome to Montauk Energy's Contractor Safety Orientation Module. Montauk is a fully integrated renewable energy company specializing in the management, recovery, and conversion of biogas into renewable energy. Our well field and operations technicians optimize landfill gas collection systems to effectively eliminate sources of surface pollution and odors. Due to the nature of our operations, it is imperative that you undergo the safety orientation in order to familiarize yourself with our safety program and our initiatives. Here at Montauk Energy, safety is our first priority and we expect contractors and guests to exemplify our commitment to safety in all business operations and activities while on site. The safety orientation module will detail the following health and safety policies and expectations. Accident reports, first aid, emergency equipment, PPE or personal protective equipment, housekeeping, chemical safety and spill prevention, confined space entry, excavations and trenches, fall protection, barricades, compressed gas cylinders, cranes and heavy equipment, hot work, lockout tagout or lotto, and electrical safety. Montauk Energy is committed to ensuring our business operations are conducted in a manner that sustains the environment and protects the health and safety of our employees and contractors. Montauk and its contractors will comply with all applicable state and federal safety requirements while maintaining standards that equal or exceed the best practices in the industry. We believe that a strong health and safety program removes or reduces risk to the health and safety and welfare of all employees, contractors, and visitors. Montauk's EHS program is based on these eight principles. Accidents prevention, prevention of pollution and resource conservation, risk assessment, legislative and regulatory compliance, training and education, security and emergency preparedness, communication, and continuous improvement. Prior to working as a contractor at a Montauk Energy facility, a contractor must enter into an agreement with Montauk to carry out services. All contractors, vendors, and guests must be pre-approved by the project or facility manager. Additionally, contractors must accept our policies and work within our parameters while on site. Contractors who opt not to work according to our health and safety policies will either have the violating employee or all contractor company employees removed from the site. This training module must be viewed by each contract employee at least once every calendar year. Each contractor must also sign off on their personal acceptance and understanding of our health and safety policies. While on site, contractors must be cognizant of the following. Landfill gas is highly flammable and areas where gas is present in raw or processed forms are extremely hazardous. Smoking is only permitted at the discretion of the facility manager and then only in designated areas. Smoking in undesignated areas or against the wishes of the facility manager at any time or at any location may result in immediate site expulsion. Contractors must also adhere to the following general rules and regulations. They must complete the annual site safety orientation and display the appropriate proof of completion sticker on their hard hats. Contractors may only work unescorted at the site manager's discretion and they must have the appropriate gas monitoring equipment while doing so. All contractors must wear appropriate site PPE as directed by the site manager and they must be briefed on facility alarms, emergency numbers, escape routes, and shelter points. Running and horseplay is strictly prohibited while on site and contractors must observe all safety signs, rules, and posted notices. Drugs, alcohol, and or being under the influence of drug or alcohol is, is prohibited at all facilities. Additionally, all incidents involving visitors and contractors in the facility, regardless of how slight, shall be reported to the facility manager at once. All visitors and contractors will practice good housekeeping and keep areas clean, in addition to practicing good safety habits at the facility to ensure everyone's safety and health as well as to prevent incidents. All contractors must establish and utilize the lockout tagout program in accordance with Montauk practices. Employees must obtain a work permit for all work tasks including electrical work, confined space work, hot work, or work with chemicals. All contractors must establish a site-specific fall prevention plan when working at or above four feet on any Montauk site. If at any time while visiting or working at a Montauk Energy Facility there is any question or safety issue, please stop and contact a supervisor and the facility manager to address that question or safety issue. Any infraction of the above rules and regulations will result in immediate removal from the facility. Montauk Energy expects each contracting company to implement training initiatives as thorough as Montauk Energy's own intensive training program. 
Contractors performing any scope of work must be able to provide documented safety training records at the request of Montauk Energy. Contractors must also perform pre-work safety meetings at the initiation of the project, anytime the scope of work changes, and anytime an incident occurs. Please be aware that all contractors must submit copies of the roster and topics covered in the meetings to the site manager upon request. In Montauk Energy facilities, the following items are prohibited. Alcoholic beverages, illegal or illicit drugs, firearms or ammunition, explosives, fireworks, or blasting caps, switchblade knives or inappropriately large knives. Workers may not use headphones while working, as headsets have been deemed inadequate as hearing protection by OSHA and can provide dangerous distractions while performing hazardous or high-risk operations. All sites are zero tolerance for alcohol and drugs. Any employee, contractor, or guest found to be under the influence will be moved from the site on a permanent basis. Except where otherwise permitted, photographs, digital images, and or recordings are prohibited while on all Montauk sites. Any and all illegal activity will be promptly reported to the proper authorities for investigation and prosecution. Each site is equipped with 24-hour site surveillance. It is vital to establish root cause for any incident, however minor, so that future incidents may be prevented. All accidents, near misses, and or incidents involving equipment or personnel, no matter how slight, must be reported to the facility manager immediately. If a vehicle or equipment accident occurs, vehicles should not be moved unless the vehicle's position poses an immediate danger to life and health. All accidents, injuries, and near misses require an investigation and a complete report. Incidents must be reported to the corporate office within 24 hours. Written reports must utilize the appropriate Montauk Energy forms. Please speak with the Montauk facility manager to obtain copies of any Montauk Energy document. Montauk has various emergency equipment stationed throughout the facility that shouldn't be blocked, moved, or otherwise rendered inaccessible by contractors. In the event site equipment is used or damaged, please notify the facility manager as soon as possible. Contractors will be required to have proper safety equipment at the specific location where they are performing their work activities. Required equipment may include, but isn't limited to, fire extinguishers, eye washes, first aid kits, spill containments, electrical workers must have AED access and training on AED usage, safety showers, etc. Contractors may also be required to provide additional resource information to site manager as requested. Contractors are required to have their own medical first aid equipment, supplies, and at least one on-site employee trained in first aid, CPR, and AED at all times. Any deviation from this requirement must be properly communicated to the project and or facility manager. If serious injury does occur, the injured employee must be taken directly to the nearest medical facility. Local responders can always be dispatched by 911, and in the case that they are dispatched, a guide must be posted at the entrance to the facility to shorten response times. All Montauk facilities are equipped with AED units, which may be used by qualified contractor personnel in the event of an emergency. While on site at any Montauk Energy facility, Personal protective equipment or PPE that conforms to the Montauk PPE assessment is required. In general, the following PPE is required at our site. Hard hats, type 1 only and category E, um, safety glasses, Z87 only lenses, hearing protection, flame resistant clothing, arc resistant clothing while performing any electrical work, high visibility clothing is required in construction areas and the well fill, gloves, the safety toe, boots. Contractors are required to provide the appropriate PPE to their employees. Failure to use the appropriate PPE while on site will result in immediate removal from the site. Fall protection, respiratory protection, gas detection, electrical work, and or welding and ally processes PPE may also be required for specific tasks. Only self-retracting lifeline SLR devices are permitted for use on site. Contractors must have proof of a compliant respiratory protection program in the event that is utilized, and contractors must provide their employees with NIOSH approved respiratory protection. Montauk expects all contractors to follow general housekeeping rules while on site. Contractors should check with the facility manager to identify the proper storage and disposal areas. 
Waste materials and debris must be removed from the work site on a daily basis. Waste materials must be properly disposed of according to product label. Materials and rolling stock must be piled, stacked, or otherwise stored securely to prevent tipping over and trip hazards. Ensure that the material is located so that it does not block any roadways, aisles, doors, stairways, or first aid and emergency response equipment. Valuables left unattended overnight may be stolen. Lock and mark all tools and equipment. Montauk Energy maintains an accurate and up-to-date chemical inventory and safety data sheet collection. Our records are available for access by all potentially exposed contractors and employees. All contractors are responsible for providing detailed HAZCON information at the beginning of any project and for maintaining safety data sheet documentation on site for all relevant materials within their work scope. Contractors will ensure all containers that are used to store or transport are labeled at all times. If in the course of work, the contractor's employee finds unlabeled materials, the contractor must contact the facility manager for information and instructions. Montauk Energy facilities may house hazardous materials or waste. Hazardous materials and or waste are not to be accessed or used by contractors unless prior authorization has been granted by the project or facility manager. Contractors may not utilize Montauk chemicals or materials without the express permission of the site manager. Under no circumstance is a contractor allowed to store waste at any Montauk satellite accumulation area. In order to maintain the best chemical safety and spill prevention practices, the following procedures must be followed. All chemicals and materials are to be handled according to the provided safety data sheet and common best work practices for ventilation, fire control, PPE, respiratory protection, and first aid. All relevant PPE and work controls must be in place for chemical work. Contractors are responsible for outfitting their own employees with the necessary safety plan and equipment. Hazardous materials which pose a chemical or flammability threat must be used under a work permit. Chemicals are to be stored, handled, and transported according to the SDS, DOT, and EPA specifications. In the event of a spill, the contractor must immediately contain the spill in accordance with the contractor's spill plan. Spills caused by a contractor are the responsibility of the contractor and will be mitigated at the contractor's expense. The contractor is responsible for all cleanup, hazardous waste disposal, and spill mitigation efforts. In the event of an environmental contamination issue, the Montauk Energy Environmental Department is to be notified immediately. There are a number of confined spaces located on Montauk's plant facilities. Confined spaces are large enough and engineered in a manner that allows an employee's body to enter and perform assigned work, but with limited or restricted means for entry and exit. They are not designed for continuous employee occupancy. Examples of a confined space include storage tanks, in-ground vaults, vessels, manholes, excavations, or pits. Prior to any entry into a confined space, the facility manager must be notified and approve the entry. A work permit is then required for any confined space entry activity. Contractors are responsible for supplying all confined space programming, and the facility manager may terminate or suspend that confined space work at his discretion if he feels the contractor is not working in a safe manner. Contractors will work in confined spaces and permit required confined spaces in accordance with OSHA regulations without exception. The following procedures must be followed. Obtain all relevant and available information regarding permit space hazards and entry operations from Montauk Energy. Review the confined space program with Montauk Energy and identify confined space entry supervisors. Equip all permitted employees with the proper PPE, including respiratory protection. Coordinate all entry, exit, and rescue operations with Montauk Energy. Inform Montauk Energy of any hazards confronted or created in permit spaces. Control site confined spaces access at all times when the confined space is open. Mitigate any hazards that exist within a confined space and provide documentation of mitigating actions upon request and within the work permit. Debrief the facility manager on any progress of confined space activities at least daily and at the facility manager's request. Barricades may be installed to limit access to areas that are potentially dangerous. All dangerous work areas must be cordoned off with barricades or danger tape to warn workers. The barricade must have an attached sign notifying workers of the hazards within the barricaded areas, and all barricades must be installed according to OSHA guidelines and at the direction of Montauk Energy or the landfill host. Contractors will be responsible for barricading and limiting access to the work area. 
All excavations that are left open must be properly barricaded to prevent employee injury or accident. It may be necessary to reroute traffic around dangerous areas, and these procedures will be coordinated through the facility manager. Fall protection is required at all times if the employee is exposed to an unguarded ledge or fall hazard over four feet. Fall protection is provided to all contractor employees by the contracting company. A fall protection program must be established and include proper documented training on how to use functional fall arrest systems. Fall protection system consists of a few standard parts, including body harnesses, lanyards, retractable lifeline, connection devices, anchorage points, and anchorage devices, which have been illustrated here. Failure to use fall protection will result in site expulsion. Work from a man basket, JLG, or scaffolding without rail links requires fall protection. Compressed gas cylinders are common on Montauk energy sites and may contain a variety of gases. Cylinders brought on site by contractors must adhere to some safety precautions. Cylinders must be stored and transported correctly. Incompatible gases may not be mixed, and flammables must be separated from incompatible cylinders by a firewall or at least 20 feet. Labels and markings must be conspicuous, clear, and legible. Safety data sheet information must accompany all cylinders brought on site. Cylinders must be capped and free of oils and lubricants. Torches must use flashback arresters when in use, and fittings and connections must be inspected daily and before use. To reiterate, Montauk Energy Facilities contain raw or processed landfill gas whose main constituent is methane. Methane is a highly flammable and easily ignitable gas even in small quantities and concentrations. Facility managers have full discretion on allowing, suspending, or canceling all hot work activities. A hot work permit must be issued by the contractor prior to the use of any welding, cutting, burning, grinding, or other flame and spark producing equipment. Hot work will not be performed on any unpurged piece of equipment. Hot taps are not permitted. Fire extinguishers must be provided by the contractor and kept within 10 feet of the work area. Welding and allied work tasks will be performed in accordance with OSHA and AWS regulations and best practices. For all hot work activities, contractor personnel must be trained and knowledgeable in the use of fire extinguisher and in extinguishing small fires. A fire watch shall be maintained during all work activities and for at least a half hour after completion of hot work operations. Fire watchers shall have fire extinguishing equipment readily available and be trained and proficient in its use. Any use of fire extinguishing equipment during hot work or otherwise must be reported to the site manager as soon as possible. Additional fire protection, hardware protection equipment, or fire safety techniques may be required, including fire blankets and screens, wetting of areas, etc., depending on work tasks. Contractors must operate and work personal vehicles according to the posted site traffic regulations. Contractors' vehicles must be parked in areas designated by the facility manager, and personal vehicles are not allowed in the work area. Pedestrians will always have the right of way during all travel activities. All operators must have a valid training and license for the specific piece of equipment they are required to operate. Proof of certification licensing is required for operators prior to the start of all work activities. All CDL drivers and operators must adhere to Montauk's drug and alcohol policy. When heavy equipment is to be used on site, the contractor utilizing the equipment is solely responsible for the inspection, maintenance, and operation of the equipment. Prior approval must be obtained on all crane operations from the facility manager before any staging, lifting, or rigging activities may begin. A meeting shall be held to review critical lift preparations including crane checks, rigging, lift plan, and employee qualifications. The meeting and planning will be recorded on the Montauk Energy form with the facility manager. Montauk Energy representatives shall have the final say on any lift which is suspended over facilities, utility lines, or equipment. Lifts may never be made over personnel. Heavy equipment and cranes must only be operated by qualified personnel. Records of trainings and qualifications must be provided to Montauk Energy for each operator. Heavy equipment and cranes must be sized and selected based on the work to be performed. Undersized or oversized equipment poses a significant hazard. 
While using cranes and heavy equipment, appropriate clearance of all electrical lines and fixtures must be maintained during all operations and travel. All equipment must be inspected before use and have all other required inspections. Tag lines must be utilized at all times. Accessible areas within the swing radius of the rear of a rotating superstructure of all cranes or backhoes must be barricaded in such a manner as to prevent an employee from unintentionally gaining access to the area. Crane operations will cease immediately if wind speeds exceed 30 miles per hour or at the recommendation of the crane's operator's manual. Operations must cease immediately if lightning is present or inbound. For riggers and rigging, all personnel whose duties include rigging shall be trained and qualified in the proper methods of rigging. Slings must be designed with a safety factor of 5. All rigging must be permanently tagged with a load rating. For planning and operations, every job must be planned before starting, including small jobs. Incidents often happen when performing minor tasks where little or no planning has been performed. Operate equipment within the intended design criteria. Don't overload or otherwise stress the equipment. Operate according to site rules and only operate machinery where permission has been granted. All contractors conducting electrical work shall follow all appropriate safety practices according to OSHA and the NFPA regulations and guidelines, as well as industry best practices. Electrical contractors must complete Montauk Energy safe work permits, and only qualified electricians may perform electrical work tasks. Contractors must also have approved ground fault circuit interrupters, or GFCIs, on all receptacles. Electrical systems must be locked out or otherwise rendered inoperable before any electrical work can begin. Work can only be performed under a valid work permit. Portable extension cords must be three wire grounded units and free of cuts, kinks, and tape repairs. Care should be taken to protect extension cords from damage. Cords cannot be run through doors, windows, or other openings. Cords must be in a protected area to prevent people from tripping or falling over them. No extension cord may be used or construed as fixed wiring. Examples of what not to do are presented to the right. While performing contract work at Montauk facilities, contractors may utilize the control of hazardous energy, otherwise known as lockout tagout procedures. Lockout tagout is a basic set of steps used to control hazardous energy during the servicing or maintenance of machines and equipment. Lotto helps prevent the unexpected startup or release of stored energy that could otherwise result in serious injury or death to workers. Lotto and a safe work permit is required for any work on any system and all contractors must possess their own Lotto programs, supply their own Lotto equipment, and perform Lotto processes according to the Montauk Energy Work Permits. The contractor's Lotto program must be reviewed and approved by a Montauk facility manager. All employees working on the task must participate in the lotto process. Failure to correctly utilize lotto and work permits will result in removal from the site. Here, I'll outline a lockout tagout procedure that meets the minimum OSHA requirements. Notify all affected employees that servicing or maintenance is required of the machine or equipment. Identify the type and magnitude of the energy that the machine or equipment utilizes Understand the hazards of the energy and identify the methods to control the energy. Shut down the machine or equipment by normal stopping procedures. Deactivate the energy isolating devices so that the machine or equipment is isolated from the energy source or sources. Lock out the energy isolating devices with assigned individual locks. Stored or residual energy must be dissipated or restrained by methods such as grounding, repositioning, blocking, bleeding down, etc. Ensure that the equipment is disconnected from the energy tours. Check that no personnel are exposed. Verify the isolation of the equipment by operating the normal operating control or by testing to ensure equipment will not operate. The machine or equipment is now locked out. Perform the service task as intended. The last topic we'll cover is complacent behavior. Complacent behavior while at work is one of the leading causes of workplace incidents and injuries. Complacency puts all employees in danger through unsafe or poorly planned actions. Complacent behavior, including disregard for Montauk safety and health practices, will not be tolerated. All contractors and guests are expected to prioritize their personal safety and the safety of others. Stop all unsafe work practices when you see them.
Thank you for joining me for the safety orientation module here at Montauk. Please contact your site representative, corporate representative, or Montauk facility manager for more information, any questions, or concerns. Thank you.